Welcome folks. What I have for you today is the, uh, the Carter Thermoquad um, as it relates to a 1974 model, not particularly this one, but what I'm going to be showing you today is how to adjust the idle mixture screws and the idle speed in order to get your uh, Thermoquad equipped engine uh, and your vehicle through the smog test or emissions testing. And this is an actual example of what I have done in the past. Uh, being a 74 model, I can relate to it because I've actually done this and gone through the smog test and got my readings. Okay, so I can tell you, before I start this, it's going to be a simulation. Now, there's not going to be any real engine running, but I, I've got some figures here, and I'll explain that as we go. But this is an old analog meter that I have. It's a nice big face on it. This face across the whole end here is 7 or 8 inches, like you can see there, compared to a thermoquad. It's almost the... It's about the full width of the phenolic uh, resin float bowl on that thing. So it's, it's a good size meter, easy to read if it's a, the analog style that we're talking about here. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll give you some figures to start with before I actually show you the simulation. Um, what it said on the Vecchi label, and in case of you people that don't know what a Vecchi label is, it's a, it's a little sticker that's usually found in the engine compartment. It's usually about this size here. Skinnier, taller, whatever. It's, it's just stuck in the engine compartment, usually on a inner fender on the top of it where you can see it. Some some of them might be on the hood. This particular one was on an inner fender um, in the car. And they said if uh, you were going to set it up using a CO meter or a carbon monoxide meter, which most of the, the, the gas stations and um, auto service garages had in the past, that's what they'd do is they'd, take, they'd put a probe in your tailpipe and they'd take the uh, reading for the um, the carbon monoxide and uh, possibly even the hydrocarbons or the HC. Now um, if you were to take this thermoquad equipped vehicle into um, a garage they would they would do that they would put the probe in the tailpipe and aim for this particular one it called for half a percent or 0.5 percent carbon monoxide at 850 rpm. Now mind you I should mention this too this was on a standard transmission vehicle this is not an automatic so they might be a bit different between the two. And uh, that should equal, um, if they get that 0.5% um, carbon monoxide reading, it should relate to a 14.3 air fuel ratio. Uh, nowadays, computer control vehicles call for 14.7, which is stoichiometric. In other words, that's a good mixture if you're not really running the engine hard in order to burn the fuel completely. And without too much pollution coming out before it gets into your catalytic converter. Another thing I should mention too, this particular vehicle never had a catalytic converter on it going back to 1974. So what came out of the tailpipe was not reduced by a catalytic converter at all. Okay, so I got a few um, notes off to the side here. And um, what it said on that Vecchi label, um, if you didn't have a CO meter you could actually do what they call a speed drop method. Okay. Now, what I, I, I commonly refer to it as a lean drop method because you actually get the carburetor going as fast as you can with the mixture screws and then you actually turn them in until you get a drop in idle, and uh, RPMs rather for your idle. Um, what else was it now? Uh, this particular speed drop as they call it, you could do it without the CO meter. Like, I mean, you can do this at home and this is what I did. I did it um, two times with this particular car when I went through the smog test. And the first time I went through, I got a 0.9% carbon monoxide, and uh, I didn't record the parts per million on it. But then, uh, just a couple of years ago, I had this vehicle going through, and uh, after I did these adjustments, like I'm going to show you in the simulation, uh, the readings with their high flute and reading and dynamometer testing and everything else, well, mind you, at idle, they don't run the, the rear tires. Um, it's a rear-wheel drive vehicle. I, I hit 0.45%. Uh, now I'm with point within 0.05% of, of getting that reading with a, um, you know, a proper CO uh, sniffer, if you will, in your tailpipe. So I actually did this that close just by using, um, mind you, I probably used my yellow meter when I did it the second time, okay? The yellow meter that I have in some of my other videos. Much more accurate being digital as compared to analog. But with this, I can give you a better explanation of uh, how, how it's done. And on this particular engine, it called for, uh, being a standard transmission, 1974 model, um, the speed drop, or well, I, I prefer to call it a lean drop, once you get the idle, idle mixture uh, screws leaned out, which I'll be showing you, at 950, then you turn them both in equal, an equal amount until the speed idle speed dropped to 850, and you got to remember not to touch the idle um, curb idle screw 
or in a case of some of them they have a, a curbidal solenoid over on this side. I prefer to use the screw because then you're not twisting or torquing the shaft there and I found that uh, the idle speed was much more predictable and stable just by using the screw rather than the solenoid. Okay, idle speed solenoid. So here we go, I'm going to simulate this thing and show you as we go along. So pay close attention to my moving of the mixture screws and what the meter is doing. Okay, simulation on my left hand I've got a potentiometer set up meaning a variable resistor that I can control the needle with. And you'll notice I'm not going to touch the RPM buttons on here. It's down here out of sight where it says ohms. But I'm going to try to simulate an engine without having to scream and yell at you guys uh, with the engine running and you know dealing with an engine compartment and hot components and whatnot. So here we go. We start the engine. We get out our key. Turn the ignition. And there goes our engine. Okay, we're idling way up. You know, uh, way up almost 1200 RPM. Somewhere between 1100 and 1200 RPM. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I've got to keep coming back to the 950 before I, I make a, 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 sorry, a mixture to uh, adjustment to the other idle mixture screw. There we go, tongue tied day today. All right. So now the first thing we have to do is make sure that the engine's fully warmed up. Mind you, I wouldn't be starting it just like I just did unless this thing was fully warmed up. The choke has got to be all the way off. You see the choke plate is fully open. Uh, with the manual transmission, it's uh, the wheels are you got blocks, bricks, or whatever to keep the car from rolling. Emergency brake is on, um, and the fast idle screw and everything has got to be off all the cam steps. So all we're relying on is the curb idle mixture or speed screw rather. I'm getting all mixed up. These are the mixture screws right here. These two. I'm going to use this for the curb idle screw. Okay. So now we're revving a little bit quick here, and. Uh, these are the, the already the um, the settings that's here, okay. So now we need a a baseline, which I like to do. So what I'll do is I'll shut the car off again. We turn the key off. There it goes. And then okay, now we know the engine's all fully warmed up and everything. So now we're gonna take our uh, engines off, right? Engine's fully warmed up, and then we turn our. I'm not going to be using a screwdriver today. If I have the screwdriver, you won't be able to see these things being turned. And I'm going to put some chalk marks on there for you as well. This one already has one here, so you can see as I turn it what it's doing. Okay, so we're going to omit the um, screwdriver and just use my fingers and try to keep them out of the way so you can see these screws turning. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, I've also taken the springs off here too to make it easier for me to turn without them having to, uh, to fight me. Okay, so gently turn them both down in until they're lightly seated. Okay, get a piece of chalk. This is my method, mind you. 12 o'clock high, pointing towards the sky and do it the best you can with uh, what you got kind of thing. Okay, I'd like to go three turns out. You can go four, four turns out if you like. It doesn't really matter. So I'll do one at a time so I don't mess up here. So one, two, and three. Same on this side. One, two, and three. All right then. So now uh, we're ready to start the engine and, and start this adjustment here. This uh, Get the best lean idle, which is before we, we actually uh, reduce the um, idle speed with the mixture screws. Okay, so we start the engine up again, we turn our key and boom, we're idling a little bit high still. So we take our idle speed screw and we want to drop this down to 950 RPM. Now this is exactly what I did for this particular 74 model with the standard transmission uh, in it. Uh, automatics might be different. You have to look up for the specifications for your particular uh, engine car combination and it only really works on stock vehicles if you put a big lumpy cam in there you know deep breathing or whatever then you might have to do something a little different but here's how I did it anyway with the stock vehicle okay so got to bring this down to 950 rpm so we're gonna reduce our speed with the curb idle mixture screw and there it comes it's coming down okay so now we want to try to get that as close as we can mind you I use a digital meter so it was much much more accurate than what I'm doing here. I'm just simulating it, right? So it's going to be hard for me to steady this up, but I'll get it reasonably close. So now we've got that. Another thing I should mention too, anytime you do any screws up, whether it's a, a, a nut bolt or whatever, always when you're trying to maintain a setting, always try to go clockwise. Because if you try to back it down going anti-clockwise, sometimes the spring or what have you might uh, let the adjustment move on you. So always try to remember to go clockwise on your final if you can. Okay. So we're sitting 950 RPM. So now what we've got to do is, between the two screws, we have to find the fastest speed. Now this is running a bit rich, being three turns out. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go left, right, and possibly left, right, 
left, right. So always start with one and try to remember which one you started with. So now what we want to do is get this thing to go as fast as we can, okay? And uh, once we get that, then we have to go with our speed screw and get back to 950 and then on the second one. So I'm going to try to keep my hand out of the way and now we'll start turning it in and you watch the needle, it should come up in more RPMs, right? A little faster in other words. Alright, so we start turning this thing in and you notice that the, the engine speed is starting to pick up. It's starting to pick up. And then you'll notice at a certain point, if you keep turning clockwise on the screw, the engine speed will actually start to drop down again, okay? So now you've hit that point. Now you try to remember with the chalk mark where it was, so you try to get that fastest speed, okay? And if you can, do it clockwise uh, to get that, that fastest speed, so there. Now that, that particular one, it's going to move a bit on me and stuff, but just assume that that's the fastest speed. So now that one has got its, its first, first setting there. And we have, for the second one, we have to drop it back down to 950 RPM, otherwise this thing's just going to leave the scale altogether. And it also, it's a better, better um, RPM to uh, judge the thing by. And then we're going to do this a few times so it evens out and we're going to get our fastest speed. So now what I have to do here is I have to go back to the 950. The 850 comes later after I get these two set the best I can. So we're going to go back to the 950 with the, um, the curve idle screw. And then we just gently turn it down, turn it down it down, reducing speed. We can go a little bit past that, say, and then come back up on it. Like I was saying, if you go clockwise on your final setting, it's all, all that much better. It will hold a better and truer setting for you. So we're back at the 950. Now we have to do the same thing with this one. So as you'll see here, as I, I start to lean the carburetor out, it'll start to come up. You watch the needle here, it'll come up. Okay, this engine is running. This is a simulation, remember, so you can hear me talking and not having to to fight the heat in the engine compartment and being uh, becoming a human pretzel trying to work, work my way around all the parts and pieces. Safer too, I don't get chopped up by radiator fans and such. So up it comes. Up it comes. Let's do this a little bit different. Come up, come up, come up. Okay, now it's going to start to drop. I'm, I'm starting to go too lean now. I'll keep turning it, it'll come down. The RPMs will, will start to actually drop. But I want to find the fastest. Get that needle to the right as far as I can, right? So we're going to come up, up where it was, and there, start to drop a little bit. Now right there, I'm going to come up clockwise. Hopefully my hand's not in the way. And there we go. So that's, this thing's going to move a little bit because I'm only simulating here. So those are our two fastest speeds. Now what I would do is, I come back to the 950 no matter what, um, once I finish th those screws, okay? So I come back to the 950. You can drop down a little bit and then come back up to it. It's always better to come back up whenever you're adjusting things. Okay, there's a 950 with the curve idle screw. Now what I just showed you there, it's best to do it a few more times just to make sure that in case um, it's going to change because we had to drop the second. For the second one we had to drop down to 950. Okay, 950 RPM. So do this a few times. Do it three, four times if you have to, but it's the same basic thing. Now I'd go back to this one, and if I noticed it started to come up a little bit more, then I would do the same thing. Find the fastest speed for that one, and, and then drop it back to 950 and find the fastest speed for this one. Okay, now that we've got that done, we've done this two or three times, just to make sure. You know, so we're sitting at 950, we're, we're hot, make sure the choke is off. If this choke is on, it's just it's all for nothing then. So now we're sitting at 950 RPM uh, with the... Uh, with mine as standard, standard transmission, the brake is on, I'm in neutral. Okay, so now here's where the speed drop, or I like to call it a lean drop, comes into effect. Now normally this is what you'd probably find with a vacuum gauge. If you used a vacuum gauge, uh, this is more than likely how, how you would have to have, uh, have the idle mixture screws set, because usually um, it will give you the, the biggest, R, or the fastest RPM rather, with just a vacuum gauge, but this probably will not get you through the smog test. You're, um, Carbon monoxide levels would probably be a bit high, and as well as your hydrocarbon reading would probably be a bit high if you didn't do this drop like I'm going to show you. Like I say, you don't have to go to a gas station or a automotive place uh, to have them do this work. I've done it myself, and uh, like I say, this, the last time I went through, I got a 0.45 um, on the carbon monoxide reading. And the, actually, the hydrocarbons, I've got them written down here. It was 61 parts per million, which is really good. Just for some guy that's uh, put a tachometer on there and paid attention to some instructions out of a out of a manual, okay. So now for the uh, 
Well, they call it a speed drop on that VECI label, and what VECI stands for is Vehicle Emission Control Information. Okay, so if you hear that word being thrown around, you'll know what it means. All right, so now to perform this, um, I call it lean drop, they call it speed drop. Try not to, to mess with these screws and just rub the mark off there. I'm using white chalk, all right? So I want to get rid of those marks without moving those screws, right? Then I want to put a new mark for an established um, reference point because both these screws have to be turned exactly the same amount in clockwise to get this um, speed drop, or I like to call it a lean drop. So start again with 12 o'clock high on top. Make sure they're both exactly the same position. Don't move those screws until it's time to do that. So we're at 12 o'clock with the two marks now. Like I was saying before, a few minutes back, don't touch the idle curb idle screw or the curb idle solenoid. It's all done with the two mixture screws now. Now the deal is you don't go left, right, left, right. Well, you do in essence, but these marks have got to be in the same um, old clock position, just like an analog clock with the hands. You know, not a digital clock, but an analog clock. So now we have to drop it from this 950 RPM down to 850 RPM, turning both of these idle mixture screws in, in the exact same amount of turns. And it usually is, uh, could be anywhere from, I'm guessing now from memory, is maybe a half to one turn is what it might work out to. But I'm just going to try to bring them maybe to the bottom just to show you that there was a bit of turning going on. Okay, so what you do is you take this and you turn, I'll have to simulate this again, you turn this one a little bit and then you watch your RPMs and we, it starts to we start to bring it down. You notice the needle on the meter start to drop a little bit, so we'll go here. Then we get, get on this right one here. Remember, these are going to be turned in the exact same amount and you notice the speed starting to drop. So we're now here about 900 RPM. Okay, so we went from 12 o'clock and we're pointing to 3 o'clock, the analog clock way. So we go a little bit more on this one. Okay, drop it there. And go a little bit on this one. And it starts to drop there. Uh, we're almost home, we're just a bit high. I'll leave a little bit high on purpose. Remember, I'm simulating this, it's not a real engine running. It's just my mouth that's running right now. Okay, so I want to try to end up, it doesn't really matter where these chalk marks end up as long as they're exactly the same, okay? So um, I bring it down, we're still a little bit high, and by the time I bring the second one down to exactly the same chalk mark position as, as the other screw, we should end up, and you stop when you hit the 850. You don't want to go any lower than that. Well, you can, but then you have to just come back on it, and then just make sure those two chalk marks are in exactly the same place. All right, so they're both pointing down. All right, just let me fine adjust this thing. There, now we're sitting there. That's um, sitting at 850 RPM now. Uh, like I say, standard transmission in neutral, brakes on. And that's basically all you have to do in order to get this particular um, way that I've shown you for this particular carb model for standard transmission. Now the automatics might have to be done in drive. You might want to have another person sit in there and have his foot on the, the, the foot brake as well as, you know, have your wheels chalked or bricks or something in front of them and emergency brake on and and make sure he doesn't start it unless you tell him to kind of thing. Safety is uh, of the utmost importance. So there I've shown you how to do this. This is a speed drop according to the uh, the VECI label or vehicle emission control information label. But I prefer to call it a lean drop because I'm actually making these mixture screws go lean, so by going a little bit leaner, it drops. Drops the RPM from 950 to 850 here. And that's an exact um, exact way that I've done it. Now, say for instance, my idle starts to go a little high, a little low, for whatever reason, maybe it's uh, being a bit finicky or whatever. I wouldn't touch these idle mixture screws at all. And also write everything down, record everything, write it down, um, and store it somewhere safe um, so you can come back to, as to what you've done. But once these are set, unless you change your, your uh, brand or grade of gasoline or whatever, if you're staying with the same gas and your driving habits are reasonably the same, then you don't have to touch these again until it comes time to uh, adjust them again before you go through the smog or emissions test again. But if you're having trouble with your idle being too high or too low, you can just get your um, your curb idle screw, which is this is the one I like to use because um, this big uh, spring that's in here, and it wants to torque. Like I say, it wants to torque the shaft on the the lever that goes to the solenoid plunger for the curb idle solenoid here. 
So you can, if you want to use the curb idle solenoid, make sure it is a curb idle solenoid. Some of those other newer ones, uh, newer models have different gadgets on them, so make sure you know what you're doing, read up on it. So never touch these again and get your get your speed adjusted according. If it's an automatic, you might have to adjust this, but like I say, look up the instructions, especially for an automatic, because uh, all I've ever really dealt with for uh, missions testing with a thermoquad was with a standard carburetor. So just remember, if you want to change your idle, curb idle speed when it's uh, whether you got a standard or an automatic, just use the curb idle speed or the the curb idle solenoid on this side over here, and you don't need to touch these again, okay? And if you like, you can even rub those mark out marks out, and you can put them at 12 o'clock high if you want. But just make sure you write everything down and know where it is. So there we go. Now I shut my engine off, and I'm all set. I can take the car and get head down to the emissions test or the smog test and have them put it on the dyno for the running part of the test and the, wheel, the back wheels won't be spinning for the idle part of the test. And like I say, the first time I did this, um, I got a 0.9% carbon monoxide uh, level reading from their uh, super accurate uh, machinery that they use in conjunction with the dyna dynamometer and um, the last time I did this I got a 0.45 um, percent carbon monoxide level and we're aiming for 0.5 percent or half a percent carb carbon monoxide and like I say I got the 0.45 percent carbon monoxide and at idle as well it was 61 parts per million for the hydrocarbons or HC which is in my books is really good. Another thing I'll warn you before I sign off here CO, carbon monoxide, it's uh, the poisonous gas that's in um, vehicle exhaust. That's why you never want to leave uh, your car running in a garage with the door closed. Always have lots of ventilation. Never leave your car idling in a garage that's got its door closed. Or, you know, uh, especially with the older cars, they didn't have a catalytic converter. Um, that carbon monoxide will kill you. It, what it does is it gets into your blood and it keeps your blood from uh, absorbing oxygen then you basically suffocate okay so make sure you never uh, never run uh, any vehicle even if it's got the newer computer controlled with the catalytic converter because carbon monoxide is something you just don't mess with it's deadly so there you have it folks there's the speed drop method according to the factory or what I like to call it the idle the idle speed drop okay or idle drop method they call it the speed drop method. So hope, hopefully you can understand what I had to show you today. With that said and done, take care, have a nice day, and uh, bye for now.